Hi, this is Manny from Manny's Makings, and today we're going to start a series on bead embroidery. I'm going to stick to the traditional, uh, for the most part, I, I will do a cab because everybody loves cabs and how to beat around a stone or beat around something. So I'm going to show that, but today I'm just going to teach you the basics. Um, I'm actually doing a video, I'm in the middle of the video for doing this piece here, where I do a bead embroidery here, and it's going to be part of a necklace. And I realized as I was making the video, and I'm almost done, um, I realized that it was going to be way too complicated for somebody just beginning bead embroidery. And I thought, I really need to do something where I explain the very basics. So we're going to explain the basics today. There's several different ways of applying beads to material. And there's several different materials you can use. You can use leather. Um, it's better if it's uh, brain... <laughs> or natural dyed thin belly if you can if you're using it for um, you know a little bag or um, something small or even for a medallion so those are definitely better but there's some cheaper options for somebody who's just beginning one of them is if you go to Michael's and they may even have it at Walmart it's a stiffened felt so you can use a stiffened felt let me see I have a couple of sheets of it here somewhere Mm, I think it's on the other side of the room. So there's stiff and felt, and you can use that. And it's stiff, not quite as stiff as this, but it's a good to start. Um, and they come in different colors. So there's black and white and red, and I think there's a cream and another color. So um, at Michael's for sure. So that would give you an option, and it's not an expensive option. It's only a couple bucks. So you, you know, you don't need this is a whole sheet, isn't like a paper size sheet. So you only need little bits and pieces to start. The second thing is you're going to need some thread. You have lots and lots of options. You have Nymo, you have uh, Fireline, um, Wildfire, um, no, um, KO, um, you know, whatever thread you like that fits the beads that you're deciding to use is my suggestion. My suggestion leans also towards more flexible thread um, than um, a heavier thread. You can even use um, nylon thread, um, like a quilting thread, if you want to get you lots of different colors. Um, I would wax it for sure with beeswax, but you know you have lots and lots of thread choices. You have lots of needle choices too. This is what they call a sharp short and it's a size 11 needle and it has a decent size eye I don't know if it'll, it'll actually focus for me to show you the eye but it has a decent size eye they're fairly easy to thread um, and it's short and it's really nice for this kind of work because you don't have this big long needle to be trying to put through and bending the needle around um, but you can use regular beading needles so um, just give an example. This is one that I have on my mat right now. That's a size 12 beading needle. It's a little bent because I've been doing some beading. But this one here is a size 10, and this is fine too. Um, you know, it doesn't as long as it fits through your beads um, a couple of times, um, you should be good. So there's several different methods. I'm going to start with the first one that most people know and understand. And I like to do this one with a double thread if I'm using a thin thread. If I'm using like Fireline or Nymo, I only use a single thread. Um, and that is what they call a back stitch. So right now on my needle, I have two. Um, this is nylon quilting thread that I'm using um, that's really strong and holds up. Um, and because I'm, I'm only doing a demonstration, but you can use whatever that you want. And you need your the first thing you need to do when you're um, beading on something is the first you need to figure out what color it's going to be. You need to figure out what size it's going to be, what shape it's going to be. You can draw patterns, designs. I could make a butterfly design on this and beat it. I could do uh, just a round ball and beat it. I could do a sunburst pattern and beat it. It's up to you what you use. Um, this is actually bead weaving. It's flexible, but this is a traditional native pattern. That's this is done with brick stitch. But uh, you know that gives you an example of like a pattern. Here's some other examples. So here's a rosette. That's a starburst. Um, 
here's traditional Ojibwe uh, beading, which is more into flowers, so that's done very differently. Um, this is what they call a lazy stitch, and that's um, you know it's another traditional, and this is actually done right on rawhide, um, on leather, so doe, doe skin. But yeah, there's lots of different options available. This one I did on lacy stiff stuffs, um, and it's backed with micro suede. So as you can see, it's quite a ni nice, neat piece. You don't see any of your threads. It's awesome. So pick a design. I'm going to show you how to lay a line, it's, um, and then we'll show you how to do fill. So to lay a line with back stitches, let's say I have a line. Let's grab a pencil. And you can draw on this lacy stiff stuff with pencil. If you have a darker color, you can use Kaler's chalk. Um, but let's draw a line. So we'll draw a line over here. So let's say I want to go up that straight line. Okay? So I have a line, and I want to go up it. So the first thing I need to do is put a knot in my um, end of my two strings, and I've got my other string attached to it now. Silly girl. I've got another needle threaded with some other stuff, so... So, you have two choices. When you're new, it's easier just to come from the bottom, leave the knot on the bottom. If you're going to cover this lacy stiff stuff, which you will, with micro suede or leather, or you're going to glue a backing on it, or you're going to glue it into a, to a cab finding, whatever you're going to do with it, stick it on a bracelet, sandwich it between the leather to make a bracelet, whatever you're going to do with it, um, you can hide the knots fairly well as long as your knots aren't really big. If your knots are really big, it's much better to start your knot on the top end. But we'll teach you just to do the bottom end today, okay? So you're going to just take your needle, and I needed to figure out where I sort of was. So I'm going to just bring my needle up at the bottom of the line, doesn't really matter, and I'm going to pull it through. Pretty simple, right? So this is called a back stitch, and depending on how secure you want it and how long of an area you want to travel over. You can go wrap every bead, you can wrap every four beads, uh, you can go back over um, every two beads. It it depends on how tight. Now my suggestion is, is that you can get away with every two beads and it be really secure and stay on your project for like a long time. You can do every four beads if it's going to be something that's not going to have a lot of rubbing and like it's not on a moccasin or it's not on a, a piece of clothing. If it's like a brooch that's never going to be, you know, ha handled that much, um, it's not going to get a lot of wear and tear. Um, you know, you can go every four beads. It depends on what you're using it for. Um, so I'm going to do the two bead approach. Okay, so two beads pretty standard. Um, so, especially on straight lines, if you go on a curve, you need to do it less, okay? And we'll explain that when we get there. So, there's two ways of doing this. One is if you know how wide your beads are, you can just go back down where your beads are. But a lot of people don't know how wide their beads are. So, we're going to just pull the beads down on this piece of thing. And we're going to push our beads back against, we're, we're holding the thread, but not so tight that it won't let the beads go, because I hold it too tight to see how, I don't know if you can see that, let's zoom in here. Sorry, I'm trying to zoom in here. Okay. So, see the thread here, that's on the back side here? If I push this down, and the, the see when I tighten it up, you can see the thread on the back side here, at the bottom? See, I can see the thread? If I let go and loosen a little bit, I can't see the thread anymore. Okay, so just relax. This is not about speed. This is not about um, tightness so much. It's just neatness, okay? So I'm going to come back down right on that line in front of that those two beads. So I'm actually sticking my needle up against the beads, and I'm going to come back down that line. Ta-da! Pretty easy so far, right? I'm going to let go of that so I don't get myself tangled up in a mess. Um, square corners are never great, but I don't know what I'm going to use this piece for, and I will reuse this piece, so I don't want to cut it. So you have these two beads on here, and this is the starter, so I'm going to come back up right next to the front bead that I put on, my first bead that I put on. So there's my first bead. I'm going to come back up right beside the other hole that's there. You don't want to come back up the same exact hole. Then I'm going to put my needle through the two beads and I'm going to pull 
and this is where you can tighten just a little bit and then I'm going to put two more beads on and hopefully you can see this I'm using black and white on purpose so that it makes it easier to see so I'm going to put two more beads on my needle I'm going to slide the beads down Let's see I can get them to slide down and stay in frame there we go so I have my two more beads on so I have four beads on now okay so these two are loose these two are secure see they're not going anywhere all right so again I'm gonna butt the beads up against the other beads and I can see my line and I'm gonna bring my needle down against the beads and then straight down with my needle so my needle is going like this straight down on that line see it's on the line right at the space of the two beads so then you have your next two beads now this is where you back stitch so I like to go back to the previous grouping so I had a grouping of two and a grouping of two so I'm gonna come up in the middle of this grouping so I want to come up on the line between those two beads I don't want to split my threads but I do want to come up on that line okay doesn't matter whether you come up on the right or the left and then I'm going to bring my needle through with all the threads on it through the three beads okay and I'm going to pull and see they're secure they're not going and they're straight all right that makes sense so you follow the line let's say I want to all of a sudden start to curve the line so I'm going to pick up two beads and I'm going to show you what it looks like now if I'm doing a nice gentle curve and I want to come away from the line here and I'm going gently like this I can sort of follow the curve slowly but if I want to do a curve that's way more bendy do you see how those beads start to split and they don't lay as nice that's when you have to do one bead at a time come back go through here go through those two beads at another bead um, but there's another method that I'll teach you later that's a better way for curves okay so and I'll show let me show you what four looks like so I'm going to put four on so that's sort of the maximum I would say to go um, if you're doing something because of what happens to the beads and I want to show you the difference so you can see the so I put four on so I have four new beads here see how there's four new beads that aren't attached to anything I'm going to put it, the string on my line and I'm holding it there I'm putting my needle I'm moving it the thread slightly to the side so I can see that line right and then I'm going to I'm right on the line and I'm putting it straight down okay and I'm trying not to get caught on the corner which I seem to do every single time so I have four beads and a lot of people put on four beads and just back up two put on four back up two so I'm gonna back up two there's one there's two so I backed up two I'm close to my line if I want to be really picky I can make sure I come right on my line and if you want for things to be perfectly straight or as straight as you can can get then you want to come on your line okay so I bring it back to something feels weird with my thread no it's just the tail okay so you can feel on the back when you have like a loop that you didn't pull through properly and then I'm gonna go back through just two of the beads okay there we go two of the beads and pull straight now I don't know if you can see this but I've gone through those and see how I can move them more I can move them more these ones don't move as much I can move these ones a lot more and that's th that's okay that beads move but it depends on like if, if I'm gonna rub on this or it's gonna be on let's say a necklace and it's gonna rub against you know it's gonna twirl around and I'm gonna hit it on things and I'm gonna knock it on the desk as I lean forward you know that kind of stuff um, then you're not gonna want to do it that loose so it's your choice you can go as quick as you want and I don't know why I just went out of focus sorry about the hand in front of the camera but I'm trying to get it to focus and it's being really bad today what just happened there we go it decided to be silly okay so that's how you do what they call a back stitch 
All right, so that's your number one stitch. Now we're going to just leave this here. I'm going to take the thread and cut it, and I'm going to tie a knot. Another knot. Because I want to show you another way to do to lay beads down in a straight row. Okay, let me back out a bit. So I'm just going to tie a knot in the end. I'm just leveling up my ends. And I usually go once, twice, three times through the loop. And then you get sort of this lump. And it gives me a much bigger knot that I know it's not going to slip through. And I just cut it off. I don't want the excess thread on the other side. Okay, so I have my knot. And it's a messy knot, but that's okay. So let's do another line. I'm going to draw a line. Now this method is way better for when you're going around, if you have to go around corners. So actually let's do a, we'll branch this off. Okay. So I'm going to go around the corner. So I'm going to do, start the same way. And you're going to use two needles this time and two things of thread. Okay, so I'm going to start at the bottom. Got my needle in the bottom. And as you see, sometimes I have to poke several times. It's okay. Um, when you're doing leather, it's, you know, you don't want to be making it perforated <laughs> as you're looking. But you're, you use your fingers underneath and other things that you'll start to get the hang of, of how this feels. So I'm going to put on a bunch of beads. So I'm just picking up a bunch of beads. If they can get them to lay flat so I can pick them up. There we go. Okay. Now this is more beads than I could put on this way at one time, right? So now I'm going to take this needle and I can do one of two things. I can stick it in the corner of my work or I can stick it in the board. Either one's fine. Just stick it in something. So now I have another single one. Okay. And I'm going to use that. And I'm going to bring that up basically two bead space on this line. Doesn't really matter. One bead, two bead. Okay. I'm going to bring it up on the line. So this is going to be my tacking line, the single one. And this one's going to be my hold my beads on my string line. Okay. So what I do is I take, I just want to make sure I don't cross my threads. I'm going to just take this and move this so this works for me. And I just use my thumb to hold it on the line. See, I want to go down here. So I'm, I'm just taking my thumb and pushing those beads up against the line. So let's zoom in again. So you can see this a little bit better. Okay. So I've got this thread coming up here. And I've got the thread holding. You could put 20 beads on this. Um, and if you're doing long lines, you, you would line up, or a pattern of line, uh, let's say you're doing black, white, black, white, black, white, you'd put them all on your needle, and then you can just take some of the beads out of the way and just hold a smaller section. So, and the other beads are going to stay on there because your needle's in the board. It's not going anywhere. Do you get what I'm saying? Okay. So let's put the, the needle down. Put your thumb, whatever section you can manage to put your thumb on comfortably, um, depending on the piece you're working. And then you can see that my thread's going to go over my other threads. So basically I'm going up, down one side and up the other side. And I'm looping my thread over the beads and in between. And that tacks down that other thread that's holding the beads. Okay? So I'm going to come back up now two beads away. Okay, so I'm back up two beads away, so now I'm at the four bead mark. And I'm going to come back down the other side where the four bead mark is. Okay. And I'm going to loop my thread around beads between those two beads. Okay, then I'm going to come up two beads away again. Now if you notice, this is pretty quick. I can, it's basically like basting or, or um, whip stitching around the beads. So, um, and it, it really tacks your beads down well. Now, this one, this, I can see this thread is wanting to go like around the outside. 
and I want to make sure the thread's going where I want it to. So I'm just sticking my thumb to guide my thread where I want it to go. Okay? Now you can see this moves a little bit, not as secure as this, but more secure than this mess here. So this is uh, often used on moccasins, on long um, pieces, traditional pieces they use for dancing. Whoops, sorry, things like that. Okay, so let's go around the corner. Now you've seen the close-up. I'll stay about there. All right, let's put some more beads on. So I grab my beading needle now, the one with the two threads, and I'm going to stick more beads on. One. I'm just sticking beads on. You probably can't see me doing it, but I'm sticking beads on. Really boring, I know. There we go. So it doesn't really matter how many I put on. Um, as I said, stick my needle in the board so it's out of the way. Stick my thread out of the way. And see, you can see where that thread loosened. I'm just going to tighten it back up. It's not a big deal. Okay. And I'm going to hold, um, when I'm doing a curve, I tend to hold as much as goes around the curve nicely. The other thing you can do is actually stick your thumb or a body part around the curve, um, pushing the beads against the curve. It's your choice, okay? So I'm going to hold what I can see going around that curve so I can follow that line nicely. So I'm going to just hold a couple here. I'm going to come back up. I still had one bead loose there, so I need to get those secured. Hopefully you can, I'm staying on frame. I'm trying to really hard. With his beads, it's way smaller than um, wire, so it's even harder. And my beads are loosened off a little bit, but that's okay. As long as my needle goes where I want it to, it'll be fine. There we go. So then I'm going to take my turn a little bit. Now on turns, I can come up between each bead. So I can literally come up on the line, and there's I can actually swing my thread around if I needed to and do one bead at a time. So I can do one bead to get that tight curve and then let's throw some more beads down here. Okay. So there's my curve. I'm going to go up the next bead. And I'm going to come back down. And then I'm going to take the next bead. And I'm going to come back down. So I'm literally going up and down around the, the bead so that it lays between the beads and the thread. Okay. And then I'm going to do two beads this time because the, the curve is leveling out. Now, if you're working on a piece and you don't know where you're sort of at and you're going to lay it down, you can leave this sitting with a loop up and you know where you're going through. Um, and that, see how the loop's sitting up there? And that just sort of lets you know, oh, I was stitching this down here. Um, it sort of lets you know where you're at with the stitching. Okay. And this is the traditional way that I was taught with the two needles. Um, and it, I don't know if you can see, but even on that curve, it's not moving. They're not, I'm, I'm like, I can push up against them. I can butt up against them and they're not moving. So as long as you remember to get them all, and I can see that I missed one right here. I didn't sort of catch one in the middle of those two beads, but that's okay. So you make your pattern, you do your thing. So there's two different ways of putting them on. Now there's a third way of putting beads on. I'm going to cut off this single one on the back side and I'm going to go back to the double thread again so I'm just going to take these beads move them out of the way I'm just taking these beads off here because I'm going to grab this double thread again scissors bunk. make a knot one two Three, big messy knot. 
See, it's a big knot. And cut that off. I don't want all the extra threads tangling up my threads on the back side, so. Okay. So I have beads on my needle, which is not good, so I need to take them off. Let's take those four beads off. I'm just backing them over the, the eye of the, th of the thread. There we go. Alright, so I'm going to come up from the bottom again. And this is a combination of this one, the back stitch, and the two needle. And this is my third one. Alright, so I'm going to come up. Make sure that that's sitting right. Okay. So I've come up. I'm going to grab the amount of beads I need to do... Let's do a... A weird design. So I'm, I just made a weird little kinky doodle. Okay? So I need to figure out how many beads I need to sort of this spot. So one, two, three. Let's see what that takes me to. So this one you have to play more with your beads. So if I get to three beads, I'm holding it against the line like I did before, I could probably do a fourth bead. So, and this is where culling your beads, sometimes you need a skinnier bead, sometimes you need a bigger bead. Okay, so I could do four beads. All right. So I got my four beads on here, then I'm going to drop my needle down, just like I would do with starting in the back stitch. Okay, and then I'm going to bring my needle up between the first and second one, because I have four beads here. And I'm going to take my two threads over them like the second one that I did. So I just went over. See? And I pinned them down. So they're pinned down like these ones, but they're, um, sorry, but like this one, but it's quicker in the sense that I'm just doing a little sections. All right, so then I bring my needle up and I'm going to be changing direction here. So I'm going to bring my needle up to change my direction and I'm going to add, let's try four beads again. So if you want to do more graphic patterns and you want to, okay. So this is me just laying down a line. So that looks good. I'm going to put this in here. Same, it's not on my line, but it's close and I'm getting my needle caught, my threads caught on the edge here. And I'm going to come back up. Now this uses a lot of thread. Now you can take this one and do a really long line or a circle or whatever so you can see these are all secured on. Okay? Or a circle or something else. Now I'm going to show you how that would be done. I'm going to just leave it attached. So let's talk about a rosette center. So this is the same, this is the stitch you could use for this quite easily. So you take your bead up and let's put a different color bead for the center. I'm just grabbing a bead, a turquoise bead. Okay? So I'm just going to, I'm putting one bead in, I'm taking my thread up and then back down really close to the other one, basically a bead space apart. Now this bead is going to stand on its end just like it would with brick stitch. Um, not brick stitch, with, um, so you want it to stand up so the whole of the bead is like that. Okay? So it stands up in the center. Now, Usually it takes eight beads to go around a center bead, but let's see. So I'm going to bring my needle up about, you can see how wide this bead is. So I'm up, I'm close to a bead width. You could go even a little tighter, but you're looking to be about a bead, uh, half a bead to a bead width away. Okay? And now I'm going to put a bunch of beads on. So let's do one, two, three, four, five six, seven, eight. So I bring all eight down on my needle. Okay. And I'm going to check to see if they fit. If I, and this is hard to do, but after you get used to this and this first row is the hardest, I'm going to check to see if they all fit nicely around that bead. And they seem that they would, right? So I'm going to go back down right near where I went up 
came up. And I'm going to make myself a little loop of beads. See how there's little loop of beads? And I'm going to push the beads down. And I'm going to come up beside this per the, the turquoise bead, two stitches away from where I just went down, and I'm going to go over the top. You guessed it. Now this works, this combination, what I call the combination one, works really great um, when you're doing r something in the round because it restores you back to the beginning point again as you're doing it and you're sort of following, you're chasing your own tail um, and you don't use a lot of extra thread. So I'm going to bring it up again and back down. So I'm securing this down around the center bead. I'm going to bring it up again. And the beads are want to hang out funny, but that's okay. There we go. Just pulling it tight to make sure it's not, I don't have something funny going on in the back. And if the beads are wanting to lay funny, you can just go over them more and it'll lay better. So. got uneven lengths of thread here. That's what's happening. There we go. And I can do one more time. So okay. And then I would come back up, not necessarily the same place, but you can come back the same place. Um, here and start my next row of beads that would lay on top of that row. I tend to like back it up a couple and start like here so I don't have the same spot where I'm overlapping every time. For some reason I didn't catch that bead properly but that's okay. You get the idea um, and that would have been perfect so I actually have one too many beads in there and that's why it's not laying right. But yeah you just Keep going at that and you go around and around and around. So those are some of the basic stitches that you're going to need as you do um, bead embroidery. Okay. Um, there's lots of other stitches available too, but these are the basic ones that get you started. So again, we had back stitch. We had the two needle stitch where you loop over. This is a combination of the um, back stitch where you lay the, the beads down and then um, then you go back and loop over. Um, let me show you the back. Um, not that it matters much because you're going to cover it, but there is a difference in the amount of thread um, that shows up. Um, this was me just chucking my thing across. But see how much more thread you're seeing in some places and other places? It doesn't really matter um, because this is all going to get covered with your micro suede or your leather or whatever it is you're putting it onto. Okay? So practice, practice, practice. This is my first uh, of the series. I will teach you how to make this. I will, you know, make this video. And as you can see, this is a. I use mostly the two needle um, on all of this, and this is how you fill. You, know, you made the outline first, and then you filled it. Um, you know, and this is the rosette piece that I showed you that I did uh, the last one that stitched I showed you, and then I'll show you how to do some edge stitching, and we'll learn as we go um, how to do basic. Um, rosettes and other things and those skills will translate into some more modern pieces and I can do some of those with you as well. Okay, so um, I hope you learned something today. Take care from Manny's Makings and keep on making. If you want to see more videos like this and you want to continue to learn about bean embroidery, please like, share and subscribe. Um, below is a list of what I used today. Um, basically just 11 seed beads, lazy stiff stuff and some Nymo thread. So it's pretty simple. Um, Take care and bye-bye for now.